Hello again my carpy friends, I'm back on the bank again, another 48 hour session hopefully this, this time, different venue for a change, I've decided to go on to my old syndicate which I've been on for the last three years now, it's in Lincolnshire, it's called Deepins 1, bit of a special place, lots of big fish in it, I've had most of them I must admit, there's only one fish that I'm after now, it's a fish called Stage Long Lost, hopefully I can bag that at some point in the near future, if not there's still plenty more to go for. Like I say, it's a new venue for me last one I was on. That, that was the folly over in Peterborough. Now I'm over on uh, Deepin's one in Lincolnshire. It's another cold one again, but that's the time of year, I suppose. Um, like I say, I've got two nights in front of us again, and I brought a special guest with us this week. My grandson, Archie. Well, I'll just show you in two seconds. There's our cheek, but I'll spin him round. Two six. Hello. This is my grandson Archie. I'm trying to teach him all I know. No laughing there by by the way. Um, he's come down to have a go with his float rod, as you can see on the bivy. He's got his own little float rod with him today. He's up to try and catch a few of the resident rudd in the lake, which is a fair few of. We always do really well in the summer, going for the rud. So, just see how it goes. Like I say, it is really cold at the moment, but got to be in it to win it. And there's the swim I'm fishing at the moment. Usual setup. Got two rods over that way, one towards a bar over where that, that boy you can see. Hopefully, you can see the boy in the water from there. I'm not sure if you can or not. That little boy there, I've got one in front of that and I've got one just over that area to the right of that bush on that island and the other rod is out towards the far side, roughly where those geese are I would say, if you can see the geese, which are pairing up at the moment, same as on the folly so they're just fighting all the time, going to be a pain in the backside but there ho, it's that time of year, it's spring, so just got to put up with these things. Like I say, 48 hours to go, so fingers crossed we might have something. You never know. I think it's, it's done one fish since last November. That came out on Friday, so to start, there's been one out, so can't complain at that. So hopefully there'll be a few more having to go on the feed. Just have to wait and see. got a few items of tackle to show you later on, probably show you them tomorrow, it's just a, a rhino light for the for the camera, half a backlight on night shots and things, or shots in the bivvy, most things really you can use it for, I'll show you that later, and I've got a new plastic thermal mug from um, Ridge Monkey, something else to show you as well, other than that I think I'll sign off for the time being. It's almost tea time. Go and have something to eat and I'll get back to you later on in the night. If not, I'll see you all in the morning being well. Hopefully, might have a fish, you just don't know, we'll just try. Just keep plugging away, that's all we can do. Hopefully, eventually they'll turn up and we'll try and catch a few to show you. Signing off for now. Cheers now, thanks. Hi everybody, welcome back. Nothing much to report, I'm afraid, other than Overnight we've had 14 hours of solid rain, which has been an absolute nightmare. Hardly got any kip, obviously no fish to report as of yet, otherwise I'd have showed you earlier. The banks themselves have just like it being, yeah, been in the, in the Battle of the Somme, can't even say it. In the Battle of the Somme, I've got, I've got trench foot I think, it's been that wet. But it's let up for the time being, so Archie's had time to get his rod out and have a go for some silver fish, mostly rudd in here and the odd perch really, but he's having a go with the maggot, so just see how he gets on, no signs of anything as yet, but like the same as the carp fishing, you just never know, something might come along at some point, I'll just spin round to Archie, just, just show you him on his box fishing, two six. There's Archie the main man having a go, he's got his float out there, don't know if you've got the spot, it's tiny yellow tip. There's his box of maggots. 
Well, they're nice maggots, Archie. Where are them from, son? Cat crazy to take a shot in Gisborough. Nice one, son. Good lad. That's a good point, Arch. Really good point, really. Wherever you can, always try and support your local tackle shop because once they've gone, that's it, they've gone. There's been loads and loads of shops have shut down recently due to the internet and most of the tackle shops that are left now will price match so it's always worth a phone call or, or a call in and just say you've found a particular rod or reel or whatever you want or bite the lamb on the internet at a certain price. Can you match it or beat it? And most of the ones who are, who are going to stay open in the future will match it or even better buy a pound or two, you just never know. So it's always worth a go. Like I say, we always want to try and keep our tackle shops because they're always good meeting places, good places to go to have a chat with the lads, good places to go to find out what's been coming out of lakes in the area and to find new lakes in the area, where's been fishing, where hasn't been fishing, all that sort of thing. So they are a really good source of information, the local tackle shop. And most of the lads who work in the shops know all about the area and everything as well. Like and carp crazy over near Gisborough that I use on a fairly regular basis is a properly fully kitted out carp shop really he has everything that you need if he hasn't got it in stock he'll soon get it for you as well so and he always tries to price match wherever he can obviously pointless going in and saying that you can get it at x pounds when you know you can't because he can't match that obviously but any fair price that you've been offered I'm sure he'll try and match it for you Always worth a go. So other than that, nothing to report. So I just have to see what the evening brings. I don't know if I'll get a chance to do the reviews because the rain just keeps coming absolutely big and relentless. Like I say, we've just had about 14 hours of constant rain. It's just never let up once. It's been absolutely horrendous like, but like I say, I always keep saying, after being at the win it, you just never know when one of them bite lambs is going to scream off. So fingers crossed might happen if not as always next time but we'll always be trying and plugging away if you haven't already can you push the subscribe button at the bottom please be much appreciate if you could obviously more subscribers the better and then i'll be doing more blogs and well, more vlogs as they're called now obviously i'm quite old-fashioned still it's just a blog to me but obviously it's it's videoed so it's a vlog now so i'd appreciate if you push that button for me and follow me. I'll be putting some links down the bottom to various items to tackle at various times as well. All, all the items to tackle that I use. So I'll keep doing that in the future. Thanks a lot for your support. Hopefully speak to you soon. Cheers now. Cheers. Hi again everyone. Just a quick thought I've had why I've been sat in my bivy, bored witless, waiting for the fish to come along. Um, big thing I always check before I start fishing or once I've actually started fishing is where I'll take the photographs of the carp that I catch as and when I catch them. So I always try and choose a good background, whether it's a nice floral black background, a nice tree or a bush or something along those lines. You see so many photos that are ruined by poor backgrounds like the bivvies in the shot or there's bait buckets in the shot or the cars behind it or the vans there or something. What I always try and do once I've cast out is I'll have a quick scan around in the area of the swim that I'm fishing and I'll try and find an area which will be suitable for photographs. In this particular swim here, there's one really good area. It's a nice um, bright yellow gorse bush with a big spring tap in, in full bloom at the moment. So I'll show you that quickly with the Archie as our top model. One second. Something along those lines where you can see the nice bright bush in the background, the lakes there and everything, there's no buckets in sight, nothing like that. The main thing that's been shown is actually the angler with the fish. Obviously he's not rolling the fish at the moment, it's purely for the film like, but you get what I'm saying. Whereas you move round over this side to the left hand side of this road. Nice, variegated, coloured conifer bush, which same again will give you a, a really nice background as well. And now all you can see is the background, of the bush, all blends in well, makes the angler and the carp stand out well. Whereas 
some of the shots that you see, all you can see in the background, which totally spoils the view of it all for me, ruins the capture I suppose in a way, is things like Vivi behind you, rods standing up in the way if you like, and then obviously if you spin round again, just take a shot like that, all you can see behind you is the, the cars in the car park and that sort of thing. So, like I say, if you just just take a few moments once the rods are in place and being cast out and everything, and just try and find somewhere suitable for your picture. Because if it's a cap of a lifetime, the last thing that you want is a photo over there, a big horrible car in the background, or a, a bucket in the way, or a busy, or anything along those lines that will spoil the actual view of the, the car being in the picture. I always try and get a nice background, a nice backdrop to all your photos. Really enhances the look. Plus it also helps when you send them into magazines and things and carp talk and magazines like that. Last thing you want to see on the front cover is a cracking carp, nice big heavy fish. And all you can see in the background is a car or a bivy or whatever. Just a little thought. Just try and bear in mind the background when you're doing your photographs. And I'm no expert obviously, but just a few tips that I've picked up along the way. Okay then, thanks for that. Cheers now. Hello everyone. As I promised earlier, just want to show you a few bits. I've only got the Rhino bank to show you at the moment from Rhino Tech. Cracking bit of kit. Used it myself loads over the last two years. Obviously it's a for your camera, for your filming, for your ticket photos, mostly for your night shots. Comes in a nice little velvet pouch. But in there so it doesn't get too muddy. Lights fading fast so I have to get a move on. It's just basically extra light source for your camera. There's all these LEDs all there, all nice and bright, as I'll show you when I put it on. See it's really bright. I don't know how it's going to show on the camera. You can actually turn it right away down. You can also turn it really bright so it goes really bright. And for days when the sun shine, you want a touch of extra light on, you can always change the covers over. So you just pull that one cover off there, the clear cover off, on the back where the battery box is. If you can see that. It's got like a amber cover over the front. So you just pull that off, swap it around to the front. Gives, gives you like a amber light, just like a extra bit of sunshine I suppose in a way, that's how it looks. So it's great like you say for night shots, goes on the top of your camera and your hot shoe on the little adapter that's on the bottom of the rhino beam there, wind the screw down, keeps it tight in position, turn that off in case it's dazzling you, turn that off. You can also get um, bank stick adapter that screws in the bottom from Rhino Tech as well which enables you to put on a on a bank stick obviously you can use either one Rhino beam or two I like using two on, on my night shots sometimes I'll have one to the right hand side pointing in over and one to the left hand side pointing over towards the fish or framing the fish and you can adjust the lights uh, some geese want to join in you can adjust the power of the lights to suit the actual tree cover and all that sort of thing whether it's a dark area or a light lay. So you've got the best of both worlds, you can have it really bright or really dark or darker still. Sorry about the geese, they've decided to join in just as I've got the camera out, not to worry. It shows it's live and it's on the bank doesn't it. So like I say there you go, there's your two separate lenses, your really bright one or your amber one for like a subdued lighting, which I suppose could class as a bit of sunshine. That's the Rhino Tech, Rhino Beam as it's called, available from Rhino Tech. I'll put a small link on the bottom. Rhino Tech also do the bank stick adapters that go in the bottom, like I say, so you can screw bank sticks in, you can either have a single one or two. You can have loads if you wanted to obviously, but two is ideal, because you get the lights come from both ends, and it's not like shining bright full onto the fish so the fish isn't all bright white on one side you can actually move them around the suit 
so you get a really good night shot. That's the rhino beam. Thanks a lot. Cheers now. Right, good morning again, you can't be friends. Nothing to report, nothing to report I'm afraid during the night. Rain is off a fair bit during the night so that wasn't too bad. Had a reasonable kip I suppose, other than the geese as usual, squawking the reds off. Uh, like I say, nothing to report really. Hopefully we have more luck next time we're down. Just got to keep plugging away and trying to catch them. I know for a fact they'll come eventually so I'm not worried at the moment, no chance. It's been really cool, like we say, for ages and that, so the average is slow to come around these bigger fish for some reason. Like. So, like I say, we'll just keep plugging away. Thanks very much for watching. Quick bye bye from Archie. Do see you again soon, hopefully. Bye. Nice one, Arch, good lad. Right, that's it for now. Thanks very much for watching. Hopefully, catch up with you all again soon. Cheers now. Bye.